What's going on guys today? We are hopefully back with another video. We don't have a lot of time. We're doing a quick little evening outing here, going after some walleye, smallmouth, whatever else might bite. We're gonna be snap jigging some of my favorite plastics up shallow. Uh, the Kalen's Tickle Tail Swim Bait and the Jerk Minnow Junior. And the plastics bite is definitely on. Shelby has never pop jigged, rip jigged like this, except for Green Bay, where the fish are not very intelligent down there. Um, so what do you think? I'm excited, I need to learn a little bit. We'll see how it goes. So we're gonna go through the cadence. We're gonna talk about some boat control stuff because you guys always ask about boat control and uh, we don't have a lot of time. We actually attempted a failed crappie fishing mission today on a lake that basically has no crappies in it, but we were looking for the one. So we're gonna get out here, catch some walleyes and uh, stay tuned. Let's do it. Give me some, stay tuned. All right guys, we are hooked up. Didn't even have a camera rolling yet. I believe what we have is a very good walleye here. Bombing a tickle tail around. Oh yeah, this is exactly, exactly what we are after here. I actually forgot my map card at home, so I'm just kind of like fishing, fishing blind oh, here. Nice. And uh, kind of came to where I thought was the right spot. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. Come on the tickle tail swim bait. That is exactly <laughs> what we are after right there. You know, we have a crazy warming trend. And I'm really hoping it puts these fish in a very happy state of mind and they just all are biting today. We've only been out here for about five minutes now. And uh, look at that, he absolutely throttled that thing. So you can't even get it out of there. Look at that. One of the best parts about these Google Eye swim bait heads is that when they hook fish with that hook, you do not lose them. <laughs> awesome little bait right there. There we go, that's what we're after. Let's catch a whole bunch more of those. Let's do it. Sounds good. See you later, buddy. One. Hooked up. Another one on here. I think we got another nice walleye. Right up on the inside weed edge. And a lot of times when you find them in sand and weeds, they can a lot of times be some of the bigger fish in the lake. Whoa, he's an angry one. And they are loving the warmth. Another nice one there, Shelster. You want to grab the net? Eh, I can just grab him, brother. Actually, I'll let them. Yeah. We don't want to be out here longer than we have to be to get this video. Look at that. Too wow, cool. Pretty fish. Big walleyes up on the sand and inside weed edge. That is exactly what we're after. When you start getting these warmer temps, minnows kind of go out the window for the most part. And uh, snapping plastics around gets a ton of big fish. These fish are much more aggressive as the water warms. And although you can have your days early in the season where these fish are really aggressive um, towards a lot of different stuff, um, when that water starts getting above 50, it's kind of on. There's another one on that Kalen's tickle tail. Beautiful, about, I don't know, 21, 22 incher. We'll let him go. Beautiful Northwoods walleye right there. See you later, dude. All right, so I've just located a pot of fish, right? One question we always get asked is about boat positioning. Where are you casting? How are you positioning your boat on structure? So basically what I'm on right now is a big flat that comes out this way and it drops off. Most of those fish are kind of right on the lip before they drop out. So one thing I'll do a lot, I got a wind coming from this way, right? So I am driving right now parallel to this break. And uh, you know, I'm in 14, it's about seven feet up at the, at the inside where I'm looking for fish and my boat is perfectly parallel to it right now. Now keep in mind that your side imaging is perfectly perpendicular like this, right? It's reading constantly like this. And the side imaging, the way it runs down the screen like this, I know the second I see something at the top of my screen that it is right now straight out the side of you. So I'm going very slow right now. A lot of times I'll even do this part with my trolling motor. But the second I see what I wanna see, which you gotta go a little farther here, so right here, here's our pot of fish. I'm gonna throw it in reverse quick, and I'm gonna hit spot lock at the same time. Now it's gonna happen, because we got a wind coming from this way. I got those fish on my screen stationary right now. I'll go ahead and take a screenshot of basically what those fish look like. And uh, what's gonna happen is my boat's gonna swing sideways, and I'm gonna be about 70 feet, because my sight imaging set at 80, and I can barely see those fish out there within the, kind of like the last 10 feet of my graph. Now what's gonna happen is the wind is gonna swing the back of my boat around, and I'm gonna be perfectly in line with this pot of fish just like I want. 
And uh, spot lock's a great tool for doing this. If you don't have spot lock and you have to anchor, it is what it is. But using side imaging to dictate your boat position is huge. And it's one way that you can absolutely know you're in fish. Now, it makes it super easy when you do this to just be able to cast straight back and be in fish, right? As opposed to casting sideways in a big wind and you're working with this huge bow in your line, right? So you guys get asked, you guys ask a lot of questions kind of about bow control. And uh, you know, this is how I do it a lot of times. A lot of times if I see those fish and I'm at a kind of a bad angle, or if I'm like inside of those fish and I'll be casting into the wind or I'm cockeyed, a lot of times I'll go out and I'll drop a waypoint at sight imaging where those fish are. I'll circle around the upwind side of them. And the second I'm perpendicular to those fish like that, boom, spot lock, back of the boat swings. Those fish are right there where I want to be fishing. All right, guys, we are hooked up again. We actually moved pods of fish. I think we kind of spooked the last pod. We've actually got a nice smallie here. Thought it was a walleye the way it hit, but good smallie. Up on the sand, right with the walleyes. We kind of side image the pot of fish. And always, as it always goes in your walleye fishing, you seem to catch the pike, the bass, everything else before the walleye. Come here, buddy. But everything eats this kale and swim bait. A nice bass. Definitely one of the most versatile baits I've fished with this spring so far. There we go. Chunker spring smallmouth. Got him with the Kalen's tickle tail. Boom, beauty. Working it like that, snapping it around up shallow. Absolutely one of the funnest times of year. Gets a little bit of everything, gets it done. See you later, dude. Going? Yep. We're hooked up way out there. I mean, bomb cast. I set the hook the first time. Thunk, missed him. Popped it two more times, and he came right back, which often happens when you're snap jigging. It's like you get aggressive with them, and uh, they just want it. It's another big brown bass. Too cool, a little bit of everything up here. We got fish all over the side imaging. Another big one. That is too cool. Such a fun way to come out. You know, we weren't gonna, even gonna come out today. We actually filmed a failed crappie thing on a lake that pretty much doesn't have crappies in it. And we're like, let's come out for just like an hour or two. Catch some fish. Look at that, another big brown bass. Snapping around the jerk minnow up shallow. Come here, buddy. He's not gonna come off. We got him just stuck crazy good. Open your mouth. Here we go. Two awesome right there. Snapping around, absolutely clocked it. If you haven't snap jigged before, pick up some of these quarter ounce heads, some swim baits. It is one of the funnest ways to fish for sure no matter what you're catching, whether it's bass or walleyes, they're all good with us. Let's let that guy go. All right guys, so the bait I am fishing today is the Kalen's Tickle Tail, and this is a 3.8 inch swim bait. It's actually new for this year. It has all these appendages running down the side, and uh, I'm running that a quarter ounce rattling Google Eyes swim bait head. And this thing is a phenomenal wire keeper. And the reason I love this hook so much, especially on swim baits with a little beefier body, is because it is just indestructible. And it is super, super strong, super sharp. And one problem you run into when you get swim bait heads um, for fishing swim baits in like smaller walleye sizes, is that oftentimes that hook is enormous. Way too big. Uh, to fish with like a spinning rod and walleye fishing. And basically the way I'm working this, I like to fish a lot of quarter rounds this time of year. So I'm taking the bait, and I'm getting it way out there. And this is definitely cover water zone. This is not where I'm pitching real short, fishing real tight to the boat. And especially with the swim bait, what I like to do, I kind of like to give it this hop, let it hit bottom, hop, let it hit bottom, hop, let it hit bottom. Fishing real quick. And sometimes I'll throw in a little bit of a pop just for a little bit more of an aggression bite a few times. But most of the time I'm just going pop and I'm reeling when I'm picking up slack. So my bait's on the bottom, reel down, pop. Bait's on the bottom, reel down, pop. One of the videos I just did uh, was on the Kalen's Jerk Minnow, and that one I like to get a little bit snappier with it, because that doesn't have that bigger tail movement, and it doesn't have to come as far off bottom. The whole enticing part about a swim bait is the fall when that tail starts rattling. So I'll pop it up, let it hit bottom. Pop it up, let it hit bottom. Pop it up, let it hit bottom. Over and over, and we're fishing very fast in five to 10 feet of water. The whole reason you fish a plastic is so you can cover a ton of water. You know, A lot of times you're fishing just this real finite, very small area, like the tip of a rock bar that's as big as this boat, it's probably better to go with a jig and minnow, something you can kind of manipulate a lot more in that very small area, right? So plastics is cover water season. It also works out extremely well, because this time of year, we have a lot of these weeds starting to pop up, and uh, they're not very tall, you can fish through them great, and these fish gravitate towards a lot of these flats when this water gets in this low to mid to upper 50 degree range. And a lot of this kind of eight to 15 foot stuff is gonna be a huge player in the next few weeks here. And 
there's already a lot of fish showing up kind of in this this pre-summer pattern i'll call it um but fish to plastic that's kind of the deal you know i always get asked a ton of questions rod reel stuff like that a 6.9 Elliott rods, medium fast is my go-to. Another great one would be like the 6.10 medium light extra fast. Both great rods for doing this technique. Pissy fun, Carbon X 2000 on there. 10 pound braid, and I always double uni knot a 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon leader when I'm doing this, and that's as simple as it gets. If you don't have a lot of confidence in plastics, now is a great time to get out, do a bunch of snap jig, and catch a bunch of walleyes. Talk to me. Finally hooked up. I was starting to lose faith in my plastic nice wall I do do. Yeah. Nice wall I made that for you. Okay. You snap jig one, Shelby. I finally did it. A little different than uh, than regular jigging. Oh, it's a big one too, yeah. Shelby. Big one right in the cabbage. Hell you yeah. Got finally. <sighs> That's a good one. Hell How yeah. How was snap jigging? Explain it to the people. Uh, I, you did crank it that's all you just crank it, <laughs> just crank it. and i don't know if i know what i'm doing i'm definitely not as good as tom but i'm getting there you gotta start somewhere yep. a lot of people struggle with it it's all about getting the cadence right making sure you're on bottom yep and uh definitely gets big bites I'll give you guys a look so we're out here ripping plastics um i this is my first and only fish of the day tom is killing it i'm getting a little better um a lot different than a jig and a minnow. We haven't been out for very long. No. I think you give it a whole day doing this. You've got them in Green Bay doing this, but they're much stupider in Green Bay. Yeah. So yeah, I was starting to lose faith, but it's a lot of fun. This guy hit it hard and instantly knew. A little Boom. jerk minnow junior. Yep. So what we are after for sure right there. Perfect way to end the night. Well, that is gonna do it for this evening's quick little video. Came out, caught a few fish. Shelby got one pop jigging and a good one at that. So definitely a success. Um, hopefully this video was beneficial for you guys. Hopefully you guys learned something about kind of boat control. We'll do a ton more boat control videos because um, it is super important in catching fish. It's probably one of the most important things that never gets mentioned about catching fish. But, um, you know, if you guys want to get out, catch a whole bunch of fish on plastic, snap jigging is one of my absolute favorite things to do because the bites are so ferocious. You can cover so much water, and a lot of times this time of year, it is a big fish thing when you get on the right stuff. So, um, yeah, we and Shelby have big weekend plans, right, Shelby? Yes, camping and fishing. Camping and fishing. We might do some stuff on a very large lake if the wind cooperates that's the whole thing it has not been a friendly year as far as wind goes this spring but uh, we're gonna give it a go so appreciate you guys watching um, if you're not yet please subscribe we got a ton more walleye content on the way we have a whole bunch of other multi-species content on the way and uh, good luck the weather's finally nice get out do some fishing we'll see you guys next time